Penguin and have won successfully. Um, property owners sue because of the, of the loss of their property values. There was one family, uh, in, uh, again, in Ascam, uh, the Ascam Energy uh, Wind Farm in England. Uh, many of the residents uh, got full value for their homes. They all moved out. So there's basically in and around these wind farms that the community's empty. Empty houses. And nobody's buying. But, but they, got, they got bought up. The, the worst problem, and nobody's talking about this, is in Weatherford, Oklahoma, um, 2005, I think it was, 2005, wind turbine actually fell over. High winds. And of course, it's Oklahoma. What do they have out in Oklahoma? They have tornadoes out in Oklahoma. 400 feet tall. It fell down an area the size of a football field. Parts everywhere. Unbelievable. $1.3 million to clean it up. Of course, it was paid for by the Wind Energy Insurance Company. Luckily, nobody... And some of these zonings and some of these setbacks, they're only 15, 1,600 feet behind someone's house. There's a huge potential there. There's no... There is maintenance. You had mentioned about the oil. There is maintenance as long as the company is in business. And then, of course, it gets sold and redepreciated, and then, you know, that company <laughs> takes over the maintenance. What happens when it doesn't get sold? It's abandoned. There is no remediation legislation at all. So you can have a wind farm, say, a couple hundred turbines, sitting idle, nobody owns them, Fences fall down, concrete starts to crack, the coning towers themselves start to rust. The community ends up cleaning it up. The city or the state. There's already, I mentioned about how many there, there are already, in the United States, there are already something like 5,000 individual turbines that are offline, idle, no owners, <coughs> all over across the United States. How, how did the owners disappear? Well, what ends up happening is companies sometimes they just go belly up. Some companies go belly up. Um, also, the economy plays a huge point. I mean, think about the real estate market. I mean, there was a time when buying a house was, oh, buy a house. Well, it's, it's appreciating, appreciating. Renting property. Look what happened in 2008. Now, people say the housing market is rebounding, it's, but it's, I used to be a contractor. I used to do remodeling back in the 80s and the 90s. I was gangbusters. I, I had to refuse work. I have friends now, they, they're lucky if they work a couple of days a month. That's nuts. So it's the economy. If you have a huge company that, well, we're selling this wind farm, we're not making money anymore. Or in fact, we're already filed Chapter 11, we're going bankrupt, and the land was sold as part of our assets. Well, now the land is in trust. It's probably owned by the court, or maybe it's owned by the bank when they took their loans out. Well, the bank isn't in wind power. And look what banks do with houses when they foreclose houses. They put up, they put up plywood, they shut the thing down, they say, we'll sell it when we sell it. Yeah. It's the same thing with the wind tower. They just sit there. That's what happened in Weatherford, Oklahoma. The tower's just sitting high. High winds fell down. Besides the football field. So I'm going to start wrapping this up here. What, what you've got to understand is this: when we start talking about alternative energy, we've got to think really hard what that means. I mean, we understand that people from the left, a lot of liberals, a lot of earth crunchers, you know, they, they're in love with this. It's like a romance of wind power and solar power. These aren't, these aren't parks. These aren't these lovely sculptures that blend into the environment. These are industrial sites. They're excavated, they're paved, they're cemented, they're fenced in, and they're huge. They're industrial sites. There's toxic waste in the production, there's toxic waste in the I mean, in the, in the uh, operation of it. <clears throat> Just the construction alone. Anybody here do any construction? Anybody ever see a construction site or do go? Yeah. What's, a, what's one of the biggest things that happens on a construction site? The men and women come to work every day, right? Okay, Dunkin' Donuts, McDonald's, 
porta potties. Now imagine putting up a wind farm, 200 towers. How many people that's going to take? How many Dunkin' Donuts cups are going to be blown across the prairie? <laughs> and empty McDonald's bags, and how many times you've got to... So this, this, this isn't this romantic wind car, oh, it's going to save the planet. It is just as energy intensive as putting up a nuclear power plant or putting up a coal plant. And one of the things they always talk about when, when they say, oh, wind, wind power, oh, it'll, it'll power uh, 10,000 homes. And everybody thinks, oh, isn't that wonderful? 10,000 homes it's going to power. They use that as a ruse. Wind power, alternative energy, solar power, it cannot, it cannot meet our, our huge industrial production demands. A wind farm cannot power a hospital. It cannot power a steel plant, an automotive plant. It cannot power an entire city, the buses, the municipal buildings. It cannot power a high rise, never, let, never mind several high rises. I said earlier when I started this, it's a very personal thing. If you want to put something up on your property, or something's out there, that's fine. It's for you. It's, it's only for your businesses. But on a large industrial scale, it just simply doesn't work. But everybody has this romance that it's like, oh, it's going to save the planet. It's not going to save the planet. In fact, I'm sure you're all familiar with it. Just, and again, watch that movie that I said, Windfall. It is horrifying. You stand and the horizon is just covered with these spinning turbines. I've actually seen and that's that. I've seen I want to thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Yeah. The wind power, as far as the spinning is because they talk about picking so a, a, a megawatt into so many homes. But if you figure out what that is, it's only uh, so yeah. 2KW. Right. And who has 2KW? To be honest with you, I don't know. Yeah. I don't, I, it, it, you, it's probably by the, uh, what is, I think it's called the I, I, the, the EIC, the Electrotechnical uh, Industry Council or something like that, where they, where they do rate, you know, everything around the country has to be built to a certain rateage. Uh, certain waters, a certain rating capacity, and of course you know about Underwriters Laboratory, they, they, they test all the equipment. Everything from like your laptop to uh, the plug-in, the cameras, everything's got to be built to a certain standard. So I'm wondering if maybe that organization, and that might be something to look up, but to find out who rates these and how is it rated. That is one thing I didn't look into. There's one other point I'd like to make, and that is because we have peak low off-peak water, mm -hmm. you have to have full capacity conventional generation idling in order to cover that. But you're not going to get that. See, wind is very fickle. And in fact, oh, another well, you thing... You have to have it in addition to the wind. Well, oh, well, exactly. This is what I'm saying about the, the, the wind towers themselves not being as green as everybody. They have to be toggled on. Sometimes they have to be backed up with grid power. And again, even during optimum conditions, in fact, one of the interesting things that happens with wind is two times in the day when power is most needed, mornings and nights. Everybody's getting up, going to work, making breakfast, getting the kids off to school, and in the afternoon, everyone's coming home from work, turning on the TV, making dinner. If anybody gets out early in the morning, it's nice and still and quiet in the morning, isn't it? Yeah. There's, no, there's really no wind blowing. It's a lower air pressure. I used to be in the Coast Guard and we had to take a meteorology course, so you know, I, I understand about the differences in the air pressure in the morning. Sometimes mornings are windy, that means a storm's coming in. But most mornings and most late afternoons, it's very calm, it's very still, because there's a difference in the air pressure. That's when we need the electricity the most, and the towers are not spinning. <laughs> No. Well, I want, we'll have questions informally just for the sure. sake of time. Uh, hey, so, thank, thank you so much for the job. And uh, Chris will be around with the So uh, I hope I learned a whole lot. I thought I knew a lot about it, but I learned a whole lot more. And by the way, I've been to Lowville, and it's awful. I mean, it's all rural. You got some quaint little farm stands there, and you see these wind turbines everywhere. So, um, so I, I can firsthand. But I travel throughout the region, and every set. I might not be in an area for six months, bingo, there's a wind turbine. Cape Cod, uh, Kingston, Massachusetts, most of them are built around the, tr the dumps, the transfer stations, right? But people live pretty close to these things. Drive down Route 3 and you see these 
horrible, mm -hmm. horrible, uh, gigantic, gigantic poisonous mushrooms, you know, or, 